Yes. Oh, it was about 3.30, 3.34 actually. Now I'm eating the oatmeal cookie. I'm, and I'm just looking at this economic news. <laughs> Heading into August 2nd, the week of August 2nd, where earnings will be released um, and it's a plethora of earnings. And looking at these motor vehicle sales, I believe something's going to happen on Tuesday that's going to help, you know, catalyze the upside of motor vehicles. Um, so we're looking at uh, Ford and GM. All right. So GM and Ford have taken a conscious effort to really invest their capital into electric vehicles. So if they can improve and show that there will be electric vehicle sales that have increased for this, you know, for this upcoming quarter, then, you know, I think that we'll all believe that this stock can go past $64 a share. That's his upper resistance that it has to fight. Right now, being at $56.84 before earnings, you know, I always say, let's, you know, check on the downside risk. So let's say the downside risk is at $54, right? We say $54 because the price was tested right around here. Kind not kind of right here, but more, it, this is more probably like an in-betweener, you know, around that 54.50 area, right? Because these stocks can, these higher uh, market cap stocks tend to play around that 50 cent range, right? They do that more often than the lower cap stocks, right? Where they play around the 50 cent range and the whole dollar range. So, um, but besides the point, so whole dollar, $54, downside uh, support, right? Just in case any type of you know economic news was to be released prior to their earnings. Then we see here that they're fighting this resistance at $57. So you always wait for the breakout. You buy the breakout, right? Uh, because this is the reason why, because it can continue to hit this $57 area that, and only hit just to see it trailing off to the side and then possibly coming towards the 200 SMA price. We wanted to come first to, you know, our risk side, which is $54. But if we can't hold that price, then it's definitely coming to the 200 SMA price. And I know you don't want to have that. But all the technical indicators on here for the daily chart line up for GM to enter into a possible breakout. It's bouncing off of its previous lows on the RSI. The TTM squeeze, even though it's zero, the zero line is red, right? Showing bearish downside, right? Indication uh, that selling pressure is now being gobbled up by buying, right? As the histograms are getting smaller. So there might still be some, you know, resistance uh, based on for this uh, TTM squeeze. But we do see also that there is a change in momentum, They're bouncing off of the slows finding a cross here, and then finding that there might be some buying upside. So the possibility that this stock does break $57 and starts trailing towards its uh, upper upper resistance, which is $63, is very, very, you know, possible. You know, when we look at industries and how they move together, you know, one can influence another, right? And before we're talking, and we mentioned that um, in, in the industry, in a different industry outside of automobiles. Now that we're talking about automobiles and we're gonna to go to another industry after that, uh, we'll, we'll see that Ford, <clears throat> Ford is also doing a similar pattern where it's right after earnings actually, right? And if I remember correctly, they uh, beat earnings. Yes, they actually beat earnings uh, by recording 13 cents a share while the estimates was that they were going to receive negative 10 cents a share. So they really blew out uh, expectations. And we can see that now the momentum is changing. So as the momentum is changing, it gives us an opportunity to see, hey, you know, this stock has some upside because once again, all of the selling that would typically record on a TTM squeeze 
is showing that it's being reduced. And each histogram is getting smaller and smaller until we get to what happened back here, um, if you can follow my cursor. And what happened back here, as you can see by the candlesticks on the daily chart, was you know a uh, significant upside, right? From $11 all the way up to $16. So that was a good $5 upside for, maybe we were held there for a couple of weeks, right? Um, maybe two weeks or so. Uh, each day, the stock was trading above the five EMA, which made it even more, you know, applicable of using, you know, my um, technical indicators to recognize that there is an upside. And when the upside happens and the stock is overbought, you can just take your profits and allow the stock to go through the rest of the phases, right? So it went through all the way up to phase two right here. This is phase one, phase two. And then it found resistance, so like it just couldn't go anymore, right? Um, so, you know, maybe this would have been hard to identify. But if you knew where your uh, selling point was, then you would have no issue at selling at the $16 area, not really looking for more upside. Maybe if you wanted to play it even more careful, probably would have put, uh, sold at like $15.75, $15.50, something of that nature, right? But it went to phase, it went to phase three, a real quick phase three, just took like two days of red and then phase four on the decline. And then it kind of tried to bounce, but it didn't. And, you know, so this was kind of a two, kind of a three, kind of a four, but the whole thing is really a four. Like all it is, it was just making lower lows each time, right? So you, then you just count that as all these lower lows are happening. Okay, that's phase four. We see that phase four actually bounced off a of previous support. Previous support being right here, right at this $13 area. And we kind of judge that from back here as well. Maybe I can move this up a little bit to about right here, 1333. All right, I could say at 1333, not 13 exact, All right? Because we have some solid candles, All right? And remember always that this is more of a it's a science, right? So hey, you're not going to get exact numbers, but you will get high percentages that rule in your favor. And every time when you hesitate, you re, you remove that potential of getting your reward. You heighten your risk side, right? Every time you hesitate, especially when you see that a stock is going in the direction that you want. Um, to continue highlighting industries and how they move together, let's go to uh, the food industry, which is QSR, right? And QSR is Restaurant Brands International. Um, you know, I definitely, uh, I, I, I love food. I'm a big food guy. Um, and, you know, but I also like safe, clean food. I inspect restaurants, right? So I want everything to be safe and clean, consumable for every human being. So restaurant brands, they own Popeyes. Uh, who else they own? Who else they own? Not Taco Bell. Uh, oh man, I forgot. <laughs> they own Popeyes. That, that part I remember. I have to look it up again. Give me one second as I look it up. Are there any questions? Okay, so, oh, it, not Taco Bell, but Burger King. I, I don't know why I always associate Burger King and Taco Bell together. Was there a question? All right, well, Tim Hortons, Burger King, Popeyes, all owned by Restaurant Brands International, right? Uh, their base or their headquarters is out of Toronto, Canada, right? But why I was even interested in this one is because, of course, like I said before, I trade on the, um, I, <laughs> I, I inspect restaurants. So when I inspect restaurants, I'm always in curious onto how much money that they invest into their food safety. 
a lot of times I believe that these companies really just only consider putting out the product, but they're never really considering of, you know, what long-term effects that could happen, you know, as people consume whatever it is that they consume, you know, same thing in the pharmaceutical industry, right? Uh, oftentimes people are used as guinea pigs and we don't really recognize it until it's too late, right? With all these commercials in between your television shows. But that's besides the point. I'm looking at QRS uh, and I see that once again, you know, you have this stock, right? That has dividends, 53 cents on dividends, right? And it hits, you know, and it might look a little choppy, but if you break it down all the way through, you will see that it goes through the Wyckoff method, right? So when they come out with earnings on this day, uh, you see that not only that they they beat their estimates, right? But you see that the, the reaction was behind it. There was a reaction behind it. And this is a big market mover, right? Q, QRS, the, you know, Popeyes, Burger King, Tim Horton, like people go there frequently. These are places that people attend to, right? And then this is, this is the potential of what we'll see with with the market. So let's say we go to another uh, restaurant company and this stock uh, QRS released their earnings on uh, July 30th, right? So July 30th, that was Friday, right? So let's go to Yum Brands. Yum Brands who does own uh, Taco Bell, <laughs> Taco Bell, uh, KFC, and whoosh, what is the other one? There's one other one. Um, they went up, right? And as you can tell, right on June, uh, July 30th, they were up too. They released earnings the day before, which was July 29th, right? And they went down on earnings, right? The price fell back before bouncing up. So this stock just continued to make higher highs. And as you can see, it followed the Wyckoff method all the way through. This is phase phase one, phase two. And phase two just kept on going really like, you know, if we take it from period to period from here to here, that's all phase two. We take it from March 12th to about, yeah, May 12th. That's all phase two. That's nothing but pure upside, really. Yum brands. Right? This is this is the power of identifying stocks and identifying its when I say like, yeah, if finding its uh its, its pattern, how does it channel its way? Right. And then when when it's done with the channel. Are you using the technicals to identify where the channel actually ends? Because a lot of times when they do this round off type of thing, you know, finding resistance, the price does pull back. And that happened here. Yeah, kind of, sort of, you know, it, it, it just round it off and then pull back. Round it off, pull back, round it off, pull. But as it rounded off, it was going up, but it was just finding resistance before the pullback. When, Essentially, at the end of the day, it still followed the Wyckoff method, went through phase three, uh, and then it continued. You know, this was phase. This was the beginning of phase four. Um, you know, if it wasn't already started, right? If phase four hasn't already started here, right? It definitely started here. Right? Uh, if it didn't start right here, where we had these two strong red candlesticks, right? That's that's a an indicator, right? Too strong. This is too strong an indicator. That might be a change in momentum that happened here with the MACD. And that's been overbought. It was, it came down. And then it just went through phase three where it just consolidated sideways and then went into further phase four. So, and then it held phase, phase one, right? Right afterwards. So, you know, identifying, you know, support and resistance is definitely the hard part, especially when you have a stock that breaks down like this, like Yum Brands broke down 
on July 19th, right? It wasn't oversold yet, but the time to look for a stock when it's oversold is the time to, to buy it. So we have Yum Brands, right? Uh, we have QSR right, um, that we went over. Uh, we also went over Alibaba. No, no, we didn't. We went over, uh, this is before I started recording. We're going over internet stocks. So the internet industry and how, you know, that, that industry and retail does influence uh, the market themselves, right? They, they influence. So you're seeing a pattern where automotives, they can influence each other. Uh, you see that the food industry, they can influence each other. Uh, I'll give you an example where the, uh, the earnings really didn't influence uh, someone in the food industry, which was cake. Cake didn't do it. I wanted it to do it, but it couldn't. Um, so cake is a, a cheesecake factory. Right. They have, uh, you know, I've appreciated their food safety standards. Um, it's very pristine and it's very systematic. Uh, that's, that's the good part, right? When you have times on things, it makes things a very automatic response. Right? So, and then that's where you can find out there's a failure in the system, right? So when you have companies like Cheesecake Factory, Starbucks, which they did well, I think I said last week to buy Starbucks, um, you know, so they did well during their earnings, as you can tell, right? Um, what was the other one? There was uh, uh, Shake Shack. Uh, uh, Shake Shack, they're approaching their earnings. So now it's, it's going to be a chance to figure out if they go up. We're going to go back to Cheesecake Factory, but just looking at uh, you know, their Wyckoff method, they went from, you know, this is all pretty much like, nah, I guess after earnings of probably two. So this is phase two, found on sell phase three, pulled back phase four. I found phase one here, found phase two here, found phase three here, even though it made a, a fake out breakout, uh, it couldn't sustain its gains. Then it went to phase four held there above the 20 SMA price, which is good to retest the previous high, right? So it went to go retest the previous high, but it found a channel, which that channel was, you know, resistance. So now we have the resistance here at 130 and we have support here at 100, $104. So that whole channel becomes phase three. Right. So now you want to take it. I know it's like going from macro to micro, right? It's the, the micro movements help influence each time frame above it. Right. So what happens on the influence during the morning time, if that energy is maintained throughout the day, then it could be sent off into the next day. Right. And then sometimes if that energy is too much for the day. And it has to retrace. So I always say, just wait for some, you know, uh, once the stock makes a new high, just wait for some pullback, which it did, and then pull back to its 20 SMA, you know, and then see, find if that was previous support, which it was, it was previous support at $107. It bounced there and went up, right? Tested resistance, but couldn't break it. So this is why we said this is, once we see that it couldn't break it, and it was going to pull back. It's going to pull back to the previous support, right? Um, that's just how it happens. And if you use the other indicators with it, it will also show you that it will that it will pull back. Uh, uh, and 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 once it pulls back and it starts entering in this channel, you have to start recognizing that support line. That that support line is being retested over and over again. Not just one, two, three four right and it's just waiting it's like a bouncing ball waiting to bounce to fall down and then the breakdown so now that it broke down shake shack went through phase four is now collectively in phase one right i know it did a little pullback we can say that this was you know phase from phase four to phase one 
and then gradual phase two to a phase four to a phase like two to we could say that <clears throat> or we could say overall you have a phase one that's formed here at $81 and is holding support above that um, at $87. And it's not overbought. It's by, it bounced off the oversold. It's holding this uh, 50 area, which is a good area. The TTM squeeze is starting to move up. And this is all before earnings, right? So maybe there might be an influence of digital sales, right? Um, that have been used with sale of a, a Shake Shack. When I say digital sales, I'm, I'm referring to like, you know, people buying off of, buying Shake Shack using PayPal or Square or, um, you know, what other, you know, other merchants other than um, Visa and MasterCard. Um, you know, American Express, like, you know, things outside of those that they're paying in other forms, you know, because cryptocurrency will be a big thing. And, you know, people are going to be paying for food, regardless, people are always going to want to pay for food. So back to Cheesecake Factory, Cheesecake Factory did not do what I wanted it to do, even though it had all the assemblance of a breakout chart here, right? Um, I bought, I remember I was buying here on this day, uh, because I really thought this was going to break out. I was expecting it to break out above $63. Um, so after that, didn't really do what I thought it was going to do. So I had it for one more day. And this is why I say, you know, you don't have to hold any stock through earnings because if I held this all the way through earnings, I would have. I would have had some significant downside. I ended up selling this because I am chicken shit. I don't know what's going to happen after when the earnings is released. And I'm glad I did because this is going, this is going lower and their earnings release said that they beat earnings. It was 80 cents to the estimates of 74 cents. Right? So this is why the reaction to earnings, is more important than the actual earnings themselves. You know, because a stock can come out with blockbuster news on their earnings, um, but the stock price will still come down. And I'm not saying that Cheesecake Factory had blockbuster news. I am saying that they beat earnings <laughs> and the stock price still came down. So that means that there is, you know, the response to how these earnings happen, you know, is what dictates that price, essentially, our earnings. So I'm not to say that this won't hold uh, previous, you know, let's say previous support is at $43. I'm not saying that it won't hold that. Um, I'm saying that it should touch that price uh, and, and if it doesn't, then that's also good. Um, but with positive earnings um, and no known illnesses at the Cheesecake Factory, I don't see why this wouldn't go up higher, right? People are going to still travel. People are still going to want to go out and eat. And one of those destinations, you know, I've seen it in, you know, commercial type areas is the Cheesecake Factory. People don't mind going to Cheesecake Factory because, you know, at least on the eastern border of southern cities, it's a, a well-known name. And it's like a fancy name. It's like your it's like your upper enchilada of uh enchilada of uh of Applebee's. <laughs> like it's like Cheesecake Factory is just an upgrade from Applebee's, you know? So, you know, it's it's like if you're going to Red Lobster, if you're going to Olive Garden, you're like it's one of, I don't know. That's just my my two cents. But that's what I have essentially um, that I'm looking at, particularly for this upcoming week. Um, I know I haven't really dived into what's, what's going to happen on Thursday, 
but essentially, you know, from Monday to Wednesday, there's going to be a lot of uh, either oil news uh, because, you know, green planes, they offer, uh, um, what is it, ethanol products for food. So, you know, how that works is quite interesting. So I want to see what they're going to do um, when it comes to, you know, saving the environment. You know, ESG, uh, ESG has been a, a big type of investment that people have been thinking about quite often. So ESG is, was this uh, environmental, social, and political uh, agenda or, or governance. I mean, not political, governance. So environmental, societal, and governance. So uh, and then, so everyone's looking for ways to make, you know, the earth a better place. And why not do it with, you know, using natural oil or ethanol. Um, but there's also semiconductors. There's a lot of semiconductors coming out with earnings this week. Um, last week we had uh, uh, AMD and Micron that did very well. So now we also have this week NXP uh, on semiconductor. That's O N O N semiconductor NXP. Um, I believe uh, broadband will be coming out with earnings as well. So the, we have that whole semiconductor industry that's ready to do something. Uh, and then, like I said, we have oil that wants to do something with BP on Tuesday, um, Occidental after the close on Tuesday. So we see that oil is gonna be not just in the food industry, but also in the automotive industry. So this will be something else to look and see how the, the influence of oil on auto sales and the auto report that's going to be released on th on Tuesday, uh, how that's going to affect the, the, the auto market in itself, right? And I know I only highlighted GM and Ford today, but typically there is a whole lot of other ones, right? A whole lot of other ones. So, you know, I'm staying away from China um, with NIO, right? And NIU. But I do know in the long term, once the government has figured out what there needs to be as far as balancing of rules and making sure that they don't create another billionaire uh, away from Jack Ma, because Jack Ma will probably be the last known billionaire that you will see coming out of that, uh, out of that uh, country. So, and so we got to figure out, you know, you know, when it comes to China play uh, or China investments, you know, when is going to be the right time? So I've been staying away from Alibaba just because of that, because there should be more downside, but they're coming out with earnings on Tuesday. So when it comes to, you know, China, like I said, I know we didn't go into cars, but there will be, of course, people are always going to be buying something on the internet and that's where alibaba would uh, come into play but i'm still very 100 percent scared of alibaba because once again it's a chinese play um uh, and then there's sun power sun power is coming off of his lows so i would really like to see sun power find some upside here especially that it's in um its own type of you know energy uh not energy battle but uh, the way that it is um and the way that it can play into the market. Um, and then we have Devon, Devon Energy, uh, same thing. Yeah, this is a relatively cheap stock, actually. So we could, let's, you know, let's actually look at, we can look at Devon Energy. Uh, where's, so DVN. So Devon Energy Corp, as you can see right here, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of playing oil just because there's so much unpredictability that can happen in Saudi Arabia. Well, with OPEC, I should say, as a whole, not just uh, Saudi Arabia and then OPEC plus, uh, including Russia. So uh, I, I'm not a big fan of what can happen there, but I do like to have an interest of what oil is and where it can go, right? Because oil is in everything. 
the things that we need in our body needs oil too. And I'm not saying that we're ingesting gasoline oil, but oil like ethanol, well, that's more of an alcohol, but you know, we do get oil from some of these products that is very necessary for, for a sustainable living. So you know, here we have that um, uh, as a whole, Devon Energy just went through phase two, right? Um, and then now it looks like it's coming down through phase four, right? It may have found a quick phase three right here um, before coming all the way down. And this started the, the, started the channel of making lower lows, right? Because it's retesting the lows that's coming down. So uh, right now it went through phase four, it's kind of balancing here at $25 a share. Um, maybe they come out with earnings and then the, it boosts the stock price up. And the past they did, the past earnings, they did not beat earnings. Um, they didn't beat earnings the last two times, right? So I'm not saying that they're gonna pull back because they didn't do well on earnings, you know, if that's what happens. But as we can see here, you know, back in February, before earnings, the stock price was going up. After earnings, the stock price went up and they continued to go up, right? Um, so, you know, I, you know, even though it reported bad earnings, it still found upside from $16 to $25 all the way up. That's the $9 of upside after posting bad earnings. So earnings can go either way. It's just a reaction to this earnings. Mm. So it's just all about that. But they do give out dividends. I see that their dividends decreased after um, the, after their after they released their last earnings actually. So when they released their last earnings back in May, they they had an earnings a dividend of thirty two cents. They decreased that. It's now at eleven cents. Um, that was back in June, June fourteenth. So so that's Devon Energy right there. Uh, I think I have time for like a couple more. When they're looking at, like I said, we went over, you know, internet. Whenever we kind of went over some oil. Oh, I did say sun power, right? So let's uh let's look back at sun power. Sun power S U N no S P S O S P W R, right? Sun Power Corp. Um they're coming off their their phase four, right? They they made a lower low. Well, actually they're holding support here. Um, at $20, um, $20 is their support. Um, they're, they're currently trading at $24, uh, but it's also below the 200 SMA price. And, you know, even though it's below the 200 SMA price, there isn't, I cannot say that it can't, the price can't go to $28, right? Because that's what it's the 200 SMA price is. The 200 SMA price is, that resistance once the stock price five ema price and the 20 sma price all trade below the 200 sma the 200 sma becomes resistance but at least you know what that resistance is so now you can clearly identify using your indicators on you know where is you know, so where is the 200 sma price Right, and I'm looking around and I'm trying to figure out how to just show you once again, you know, how to make your make your technicals like the way that you want to see it, so it's not confusing to you. So what you do is that you go to your strategies, all right, and then when you're here at your strategies. All you're doing is just implement, you're really not making this too complicated, right? The strategy is just, just that beaker on the top of your platform. And then once you're there, you, you already have your 
um, strategies in or you have your studies in, right? Your studies, all you do, you just type it in the search bar and these will pop up. And then when they pop up, you know, you can change the color to what you want, right? It can be any color. It doesn't have to be, but it has to be something that you will remember. So I have my, I have my five moving then, five moving average exponential at five, right? At five, uh, at green, right? The color is green, right? That's not hard, right? Um, also with the up down signals, I always turn those off, right? So there's no reason, like you see, I have nothing checked, nothing checked, right? No, I showed the study five, the length is five, that's the EMA, right? So that's all I do is just change, put, I make it a color that makes sense to me. This is teal. I'm actually going to change this to yellow, right? Because I want to keep the theme of, um, of like traffic light, red, yellow, green, right? And that I think is a very helpful thing. <laughs> you know, keep it consistent. So I'll just apply that now. Um, and I say yellow because, you know, the yellow is like caution. Like, hey, it might bounce off of this, it might not, right? And if it bounce off of this, you know, and and pulls back, you know, it could pull back, you know, all the way to the, to the 200 SMA, which is, you know, red, stop. Like, you don't even want it to go all the way down there. Just stop. Just stop and sell. Just stop and sell. But once it's trading above the green, uh, uh, EMA, you know, you might want to find an opportunity where to buy some more, right? Um, so that might be helpful. I, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, but essentially, you want the colors to be something that you want it to be, something that you can remember that if it goes above five EMA, you know, maybe I am looking for a time to to sell. Right, because it's at the five, and more than likely it's going to go overbought, right? But if it's trading below the the five EMA and it bounces off the twenty, maybe I will look and wait and see if it can hold that twenty SMA price before buying, and then I could possibly buy and then wait for some upside. Um, but if it doesn't, and it breaks down. Then we're like looking at it going to the 200 SMA price. And then that's the problem. We don't want it to go down to the 200 SMA price. But if it does go to the 200 SMA price, you're buying at its low. And that's what that's much better thing than trying to buy it on the way up. Because trying to buy on the way up is kind of really tough. But when you allow it to settle after it bounces to come back down, then you're looking at an opportunistic, opportunistic opportunity, an opportunistic time to, to get into a position. So Sun Power looks pretty decent. It still has that four dollars of resistance on the upside. Uh, it's holding support at twenty-two, about twenty-two. No, yeah, maybe, maybe twenty-one. I think twenty-one is a better supporter price. Um, just going by around here, right? That's about 2043. So roughly, this is roughly about 20, that's 20, 20, yeah, 2043 again back here. So yeah, about $20.43, $21, somewhere around that is a good supportive price. And then we see once again that red SMA is resistance. So that's right around $27.60. So maybe before, you know, once before earnings, it might run up to that to that price. Or after earnings, it runs up to that price. I don't really know. I just know that when that reaction happens, be ready. Be ready. Be ready with your target entry and your target exit. And no, these prices can be hit at any time, right? They might hit these prices intraday on that day and then pull back intraday on that day. Or it might take a successive amount of days worth to actually go up higher. 
But whichever one that that stock price does, just know what your entry price and your exit price is. And don't change it. The minute you change it, then that's what that's when you go into disaster. Right? That's what that could have happened if I change my 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 thoughts on cake, on cheesecake factory. Right? So we don't want that to happen. We want you to be a disciplined, sound trader who can be able to earn mon money off the market using roughly about two to three hours out of the whole trading day. Not even two to three hours. And those times, and I say two to three hours, is that those are the time frames that you're looking at. You're looking at multiple um multiple time frames during the day where that shows influence in, in the price action. So there's like three different times on the day where there's significant price action, you know, you know, outside of, you know, inside of market hours, not outside of market hours, but inside of market hours between 9.30 and 4 p.m. You have 9.30, right? Nine, uh, 9.30, the market opens. So really about 9.45, the market is really showing itself on what you can or can or should not buy, right? And then around 10.30, then whatever that was up at 9.45, either is going to continue to show itself at 10.30 to decrease and show its weakness or increase and show its strength. So you'll definitely know the direction of that stock right around 10.30, right? And then that price that was determined at 1030 typically lingers into about 1230 that's the lunchtime hour so whether it's on the upside or the downside you know whatever happened in the direction of the 1030 time if you bought which should continue until 1230 so i only mentioned two different times of uh buying occurs that other time at 1230 that's not a real time to buy. Uh, that's just a time to figure out if you are holding on to your plan that you should be doing, or you're deciding that you're gonna change your plan. And this is where you lose. And then the next opportunity is uh, to buy is right after, right between actually, it's like more of a time frame between 2.30 and 3.30, right? Between 2.30 and 3.30, you get a sense of what has happened throughout the market day. At 1.30, the stock price has shown itself after whatever has happened um, during the, you know, after the lunch run up or the run down. When we enter into 2.30, that's when we're starting to see if whatever happened at 1.30 is gonna sustain and continue to go up higher or go lower, whatever the characteristic of the day was, is going to show itself at that 2.30 time frame. So, you know, using the time frames are very helpful you know, to really organize your own day, right? You're in your own day looking at the stock market and you're saying to yourself like, wow, this is, this is a lot. I don't know how people can do this all day. And trust me, there are people that can sit in front of their laptop all day. I've met them. But at the same time, when you have things to do on your day, knowing the breakdown of these time frames, they're going to help you understand what your plan is and should be. And leaving you with less time in front of your laptop, with more time doing the things that you need to do during your day. So I'm not in front of my laptop 24-7. I'm not in front of it trying, you know, it, I could be, but I choose not to because human interaction is important. Um, but when I say that, um, just know that when you are in a trade, you, it is important to be disciplined. And in that discipline is knowing what your target entry exit are and recognizing that when you make 5%, that 5% adds up, the 5% adds up every day. Every day, that's taking a single. So you take your singles, make your money, 
and watch those singles add up. You'll be surprised. Stocks, these companies don't get 5% every day. Some of these stocks take in 1%, right? They might have a breakout day where they're at 38%, like AHPI, right? Um, I think I wanted to buy, yeah, I did buy, I bought a couple of shares just to see how the, the price action would be. And I wasn't as fond of it. Uh, like I said, I only bought a couple of shares. I wasn't really afraid of what, 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 what I could do, but I recognize where the resistance is. And that's what I wanted to, to, to show, right? Is that when you're there identifying the resistance, especially if you know you want to do this on a stock that already made a new high on the day, because the most it could do is maybe break this resistance, right? So you can see finally the arrows are showing, right? So you can see that I bought right here, right? Um, like I said, I only bought four shares. It didn't have to be anything crazy. Just needed to test out the strategy. Will it break? Uh, 1025. 1025 was as the, the high, it couldn't break it. So since it couldn't break it, what did it do? It wants to pull back. I already sold before it pulled back, right? Uh, now I could have sold at, I think it was nine, I think 980 was the price that was coming up like right around here. Um, but once I realized that it was just not doing it, there was just, there was just too much. And I could have waited maybe a couple more minutes to see um, but it was just way too much. It, the volume was way too much more than the float. So I knew the inevitable was inevitable was going to happen. I knew that this stock price was going to pull back. So there was no reason to hold on to it. Um, but you know, when you have a stock that can rise, because like I said, this is a, a recent spiker, right? And it's in healthcare. I've been familiar with it before from back in the back in the past when I really didn't know what I am sharing with you now. Half of the, what I've learned back here is not what I I know right here. This back here is more of me trying to, you know, put, jump in on the run up and then jump out when when the run up is ending. Not really formulating a plan. Even though I earned on quite a couple of these, like I, I really did pretty well back here. I, I remember some of these these trades, like you know, selling it up in the 18s and buying in the 20s. Um, but I also do remember, like you know, some of this running and gunning is not going to have, not going to help. And I need to really figure it out, right? So we. And, and sometimes taking a step back and understanding what you're doing as opposed to just doing it is also key. So that's why you, you test out the strategy. You say, you know what? Let's say if it does break, right? It's that pre, it's trading at resistance. But every time it trades at that resistance, what happens the next day? It pulls back, right? It would trade up to that resistance, pull back. And I said, all right, well, let's see if you will break this time. And it doesn't break, even though the technicals are behind it, right? The momentum is changing, and the RSI is up, the, 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 the histogram is getting smaller on the TTM squeeze. There's quite a couple of things that's happening here, right? Um, but at the same time, it's still a hair to that this was resistance. This $9.20, or maybe $9.10. And then even more, eight dollars and thirty-one cents, right? So even though it looked like it wants to break out, it still had the characteristics of what it typically does: is break out, pull back, break out, pull back, break out. It's going to pull back. At least that's what we, you know, that's what its previous behavior is telling us. Even though it looks like it has bullish upside, so. You know, just keeping little things like that in mind. Um, let's say right now it's about 4.23. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask? Um, you know, I know I went through a lot. 
I, I went through a lot of stocks today, <laughs> a whole lot. Um, so in the last five minutes, does it, anyone have anything that they want to share or bring up? Whoops, that was a wrong button. Let's get Well, I know I said a lot. Um, this upcoming week is going to be pretty strong. <laughs> so I would definitely say if you can keep your notes up and available, make sure that whatever it is that you are using to take down these notes that um, you always have something to refer to. Um, I sucked this week at taking notes. Um, just trying to find a, a pretty balance between, you know, what it is and what it ain't <laughs> like, you know, what I need to do, uh, as far as like other work and then what I want to do, you know, versus like, you know, yoga or something <laughs> like, so it's always a hard balance, but I am learning to be. I'm learning. I'm learning to be free with all of this, right? Um, so, I don't know. I think I'm just talking right now. And I say freedom because there's a lot of freedom that we can do uh, when we fully invest ourselves into what we're trying to accomplish. So, 